Let's talk about 38 Spech, the relationship. Um, I know you hit him up on Facebook. I think uh, people know your story. They may know that. Um, and then he had to hear you spit in person. The reason why you reached out to Spech specifically was why? Um, Because my friend was telling me for weeks to send him some music. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, uh, he probably ain't going to get back to me. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but I ended up sending him something. He got back to me in like three minutes. Like, yo, you got to come up to here. We got, I got to hear you rap this shit in front of me. So, like, I didn't think it was going to be like that. But, like, my friend was telling me for weeks, send him some music. Like, send him something. Like, what's the worst he going to say? Is Like, okay, he going to, might give you some game advice. Like, you know, some constructive criticism or whatever. But I've been a fan of Spech. Like, Spech got a huge, a huge fan base out in the falls. Like, I went to... One of his shows that he had, this was before Benny even signed with Griselda. Like, I went to one of his shows out there, and he had sold that shit out. It was at the Evening Star. I can't remember what year it was, but it was a few years ago. When he had um, four, uh, 38 Laws of Power. Yeah. Of Powder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, he came out here and did a show at the Evening Star and sold that joint out. Like, he sold the Ice House out. I couldn't even get in there because I had a fake ID, and they caught on to the ID. I was <laughs> young at the time, like, trying to get into that joint to see him. Like... Like, he got a buzz out here, so. Yo, yeah, Spesh is, like, on. so phenomenal. Uh, he's extremely talented, obviously. I think right now he's the punchline king, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know nobody that's, that's got fact. as many punchlines as 38 Spesh, and he just hit hard. It's a moment when Spesh comes second on somebody's song. It's danger. Because mm -hmm. somebody was like, this it's, it's feature 38 Spesh, and I'm listening to whoever version. You know, if y'all, if, if somebody did a song with Spesh, don't get offended. But I'll listen to the first verse. I'll like it. And I'll be like, oh, shit, here comes Spesh. And then he comes over. over. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just he can't steals, even get past his verse. He steals the fucking show every man. time. And you man, do He that. stands out, man. And, um, he stands out. Uh, were you nervous when you had to spit for him? Hell, first yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He a tough critic. So I tell, I'm gonna, I'll tell the story. Like, he made me rewrite my verse that I did for the... Uh, for the Anthony Hamilton song that was on Son of G-Rap, he yeah. really write that first. Like, yeah, like, he 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 got a good ear. He know what, what you know what I'm saying? He been doing this shit since he was a kid, so he has an ear that I don't, that I haven't developed yet. You know what I'm saying? I have an ear for this, you know, just, if you're a nice rapper, period, you're going to have an ear for this shit. Yeah. But his ear is a little more trained and more seasoned than mine, because I, I, you know, I'm. He got me by like ten, eleven years. Like I think me and him like eleven years apart or something like that. So I think he you just called thirty eight special old nigga just now. Oh no, <laughs> 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 nah, nah. But he just, you know what I mean. Like he, nah, he nah, more, nah. he yeah. seasoned with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like shit, I was just born when he was like, you know, getting into this shit. So, um, but he just got it. His ear is a little, little different. So, but yeah. It, I'm, I'm always like, okay, I got to make sure I come with some shit because I be knowing like just off of his reaction if he really fuck with it or not. So I'll yeah. be having to come with my shit. Yeah. Um, tell me something about Spesh that he might not say about himself. Um, anything. <laughs> you don't got to be embarrassing, himself? but something that we might be surprised to know something about peeling back the curtain about the process with Spesh. Um. I mean, I would say he's just, he's very passionate about his music. Like, yeah. it'd be funny as hell, like, when he, when, like, when you got a verse that you show on him, or I go in the stool, or go in the booth and spit a verse, like, I come out and just see his reaction when he's listening back, just be doing a bunch of hand movements, and sometimes he'll throw something, like, just going crazy. Like, I thought that was funny. Like, um, I remember when I was recording the, um, the verse that I did for both views. And I remember, because this was when we were still recording out in Rochester, um, and they had, like, the glass booth where you could see through, um, right, like, where the computer and everything was at. And I remember when I was recording my verse, like, he threw his hat and just was, like, going crazy, like... He didn't like, like, like so it? So just seeing that, like... No, he... No, that's that's when he likes some shit. Oh, okay, he got you. Like that, got you. He likes it. Like, he fucking with that shit heavy. Yeah. Like, he he... He doing a whole show. Like, he putting a dance move on for you. Like, wow. fuck with such a heavy. So, I be thinking that shit is hilarious. Like, <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, everybody know he, he just, he's, he's, he's a perfectionist and he's 
he's very strategic. He's a very strategic person. Um, and that's why I used um, to, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that y'all have a working relationship where he could tell you, maybe you need to go back in and rewrite it. And you, you take that input because you know, mm-hmm. I used, I've talked about this on my show before I used to manage a few local underground cats, yada, yada. Nobody's ever as good as the people who I've been interviewing. Um, but I used to tell cats cause they get mad when I, um, criticize them. I say, don't get, never get married to that verse. Don't get married to it mm-hmm. because then it, it makes it so much more difficult for you to change it or edit it or throw it in the garbage and start over. You know, we I, mm-hmm. I spent hours in the studio with other MCs to argue with them about that's just not it. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And that's the type of shit that'll hold somebody's career back, not being able to uh, accept constructive criticism. Win, lose, or draw. That's on the album Juno, which Juno is a classic, y'all. If y'all not heard Juno, listen to this damn album. Um, it talks about uh, being able to lose before you can win. It's got crazy mm-hmm. bars on that. And then you say, um, <laughs> you say, none of these rap niggas never will top me. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm Bill Cosby. Man. <laughs> if you didn't have to fucking Man. have a microphone to spit, you would be dropping mics every fucking line. Like all your songs is mic drop moments. That's just what it is. Um, talk to me about the, the, the hard times. Uh, before you got the light shined on you, what 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 did you go through um, as a struggling artist trying to come up and get noticed? Man, I didn't went out to shows in Atlanta and got booed by people in the crowd. Uh, took losses with that, you know. Coming back and spent you know rent money and shit when I came back. So, and I remember coming back. This was 2017 September of 2017. I never forget it. And I remember coming back home and I, and. I just was telling my mom, I was like, yeah, I don't know if this shit, I don't know if I'm built for this. It's too much. <laughs> I'm starting to wow. get like, yeah, it's, it was discouraging as hell. Um, because I ended up, I spent 25 hours on a Greyhound bus getting out there for these shows. Like just showing that, uh, that, cause I, I, the person I was supposed to ride out there with, they ended up, you know, canceling on me last minute. So I had to catch a bus out there and I spent 25 hours on a bus just trying to, you know, stay consistent in it um, and just show that, that hard work and ambition in myself. But got out there, did my first show and got booed by some people in the crowd. Um, and I just remember coming back home just like a little discouraged, like, I don't know if this is for me. But every time I would say that I'm done or I'm giving up, something like crazy would happen. Like rather somebody bigger give me a shout out. Or, like, I don't know, just something that happened where it's, like, God telling me, like, nah, keep going. Like, don't give up. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, I was, was just going to say weird. that's God. Like, yeah, that's definitely God because um, I, I, every, I'm saying, every time I would say I'm done, something would happen. Like, when I said I was done that first time, I had got a, a shout-out from uh, Westside Gunner and found out about my music. And had gave me a shout-out on Facebook. So I was like, okay, maybe I need to just keep going because I'm, I'm doing something right, you know. Benny had already knew about me, but he was putting people on in the crew. And he put uh, Westside on to me, and he gave me a shout-out on Facebook. I'm like, this man don't be going on his way to shout people out like that, you know. So I'm like, know. I'm doing something right. Let me, Yeah, so let me go keep going. I went out to Chicago, uh, beginning of 2018, and I went out there to record an EP with a, with a producer out there. Came back home. Dude told me that somebody broke into the studio and stole or broke the hard drive that had all my sessions on there. So I lost all my sessions. Couldn't put the EP. But I spent money. I took my peoples out there and everything. We all spent bread getting out there. And I thought that was going to be my big break. I just was like, you know what? I don't know. This shit just a little too much for me. So um, so I remember, um, I remember um, having that single, that champion song. That was a single that was supposed to be on an EP, but that was the only one that I had that was mixed properly. It was like six other songs, and we lost all the sessions for those, so it was over. And even if I didn't have the right version of that song mixed, like it was nothing I could do about it because we lost all the sessions. But that's the song I ended up sending to Special, and that's, the, that's how I ended up linking with him was from that song, me sending him that song. But, yeah, like I, I definitely didn't have some moments. Like I, I, didn't, my, I remember my first showcase... This was in 20, 2015. My first showcase that I was supposed to have in Buffalo got shot up the night before. I spent all kind of money on an outfit, sold tickets. We sold out the show and everything. Cops came and told us we can't have a show there. Can't 
they closed them, they shutting the whole thing down. Somebody had shot the place up the night before, so couldn't even have nothing there. So that was that was a you know, that was actually my first experience with like just dealing with the bullshit that come along with this. But yeah. Yeah, and it's but, all about know, perseverance. Look, I mean, look like, at you now doing doing stuff with um, Apollo Brown, Planet Asia, Black Thought, Thirty Eight Special. You know, after after going man, through the trenches, man, it, it, I definitely didn't have me some some losses. I take I took a lot of losses with money financially too, like because it's hard to monetize off of this off of this music stuff when you first started. Like I didn't know how to make money in it. Like Special was the one who put me onto that, so. I just, I, that's why I never looked at it as something I could be, I could do long term. Like, cause I, I just was like, I don't know how to make money off of this being an independent artist, but he put me onto that. So once I learned that it was fair game for me, I was, I took off. That's what's but, up. You know, it took some time that's getting there. Up. I was already a good five years in when I had met Spesh. So, you know, it just took some time though. So. And timing is everything. I mean, you, I, you probably met Spesh at the time you were supposed to meet him. You know, when you was I ready did. for that. I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been ready if I would have met him a year earlier. And he even said it himself. Like he's like, I don't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known what to do with you if I'd have met you a year ago or a year before. You know what I'm saying? It was at a perfect time. So Yeah. Hey, um, top three breakfast cereals. Oh. Okay, cinnamon toast crunch. Yes. Yes. I used to like those. I forgot the name of the cereal. The cereal where they used to have a little cookie, the little cookies in them. What about cookie crisp? They used to be like, they yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, used oh, to I like still like those. I got, I got some in the crib. Yeah, man, those used to be my shits when I was young. And then, of course, peanut butter Captain Crunch. You just named all my shits. <laughs> you just named all my shits. Nobody bullshit. Top Go three. The top three breakfast cereals. <laughs> Johnny, tell her what she's won. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move back to my serious questions. Yes, the synergy is real, y'all. I didn't make this shit up. On my son, <laughs> on my son, she just named my top three breakfast cereals. Take top that shit three. to the bank. Yes. Top three. Yeah, I mean, cinnamon, listen, cinnamon toast crunch, first of all, depending on what kind of bowl you get, you get two bowls out of it. Because sometimes we get greedy with mm -hmm. this shit. I mean, you don't get like mm -hmm. eight, ten bowls out of it. Um, and then I had two brothers. And my mom used to buy that, that peanut butter Captain Crunch. They call them Crunch Balls, pause, because we don't, not allowed to say that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Peanut butter crunch balls. Oh, they so good. And my my mom used to be like, I'll go in and get a bowl, and then I would get hungry again, and I would go get another bowl. I'll probably clean the whole box out. Mom said, You mm -hmm. get none of it, you being greedy. I said, No, them niggas is slow. They slow. Y'all gotta mm -hmm. wake y'all asses. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact gotta be on it man especially like when they used to have the saturday morning cartoons back then yeah like yeah. i don't know that was like something that i did when i was a kid i used to get my little bowl of cereal and go watch cartoons in the morning but i'm gonna eat me like a good three bowls of cereal like and then we used to eat cereal at night like for yes. dinner like that was cereal for breakfast for dinner was lit like <laughs> we still do that shit to this day like 10 o'clock at night I'm i like, still do it yes Yes, man, I still do. I don't give a fuck how much money I get, how grown I get. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and nothing wrong with like a 10:30 p.m. cinnamon toast crunch. Nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> on on 2K20 with El Camino, you say, <laughs> "I'm waiting for one of you rap niggas to name drop because the because bitch, I'm pulling up with two straps just like a tank top." Listen, full clip ready. I'm yo, ready. Yo, what's your honest opinion? Honest now. A female rapper out here performing like strippers and getting all the shine. Man, I look at it like it's a lane for everything. Now, for me personally, that was that's a lane that people I mean, that's a lane that I'm not comfortable in because that just ain't my lifestyle. Um, and I look at it as a very it's an overly perpetuated lane. Because yeah. most rappers yeah. nowadays have came in, female rappers have came in that way. Um, it's a lane for everything. It's a time and a place for everything. You know what I'm saying? I act like I don't listen to that type of music here and there. But it has to be a time. You can't, you're not going to catch me riding around in my car listening to that. But if I'm out with my, my friends or, you know, we lit, we having a girls night, we about to hit the town, hit a club up. Yeah, I play that. I ain't got no problem with that, but it's a lane for everything. That's just not my lane. That ain't my lifestyle. So it's not something I, I never understand. I, I, I 
I'll never understand it personally because it just ain't my lifestyle. Now, do I have friends who've been in that lifestyle or family members? Yeah. So um, that's why I say it's a lane for everything. You, you got some people who come out of that who actually take this um, this profession serious. And you got some that just come in and they, they just trying to get a big break or whatever or escape that, that world or whatever the case may be. But um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't look at it as um, anything wrong. I mean, because I feel like if that's not really – the lane or the type of shit that you want to hear, don't listen to it. So here's my problem. You know, it's plenty of rappers that's rapping out here. Because I I, I reviewed somebody's stuff on this show before that that was it's sort of like a guilty pleasure kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. My problem with it is that the consumers are gravitating so much more towards that. And there's a female mm-hmm. like, and this is, a, I have the same problem when it comes to Nas. Because you got all these dudes out here doing yada yada mumble rap auto tune, and I say to a guy, "Yo, have you heard this Nas joint? Listen, and Nas is boring. Nas ain't all that. Nas beats all this other kind of goofy shit." And it's like our greatest poets, the 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 people who contribute the the greatest, the mo- most meaningful, a uh, powerful work in this culture, are people that's kind of getting marginalized and pushed to the side in favor of people that maybe they're not writing their own shit or if they is writing it as lightweight, like, you know, it's not on the same level. So that's my problem with it. I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge nobody going out and getting a bag. I got a problem with us that we don't have enough young people, in my opinion, growing up listening to a Shay, a Nas, um, Uh a Lupe fiasco, things like that. Speaking of this, Recently, uh, Janelle Monae went on Twitter and said she is not listening to nothing but female spitters no more. Um, she's mm-hmm. tired of the misogynistic lyrics and attitude. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it's been, I mean, hip hop has been, there's been a lot of questionable misog- misogynistic lyrics in hip hop uh, since, for, this has been going on for years. Like, I don't know what was the, I don't know what drove her to, to say that um because i mean you'll still hear some questionable lyrics from women too um i mean i have no problem with that i just don't see how as a musician you can widen your ear just listening to one gender you know right. of music um but i don't know like i mean that's that's what because she we do like have certain do. females that will make songs and maybe some of them whole albums and they'll talk about Things they'll do with male body parts and how good the the pee is and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, this- or you got girls like this lane, this whole scamming niggas lane. Like, like you know, people don't think it's something wrong with that. Just purposely scamming niggas. Like, right, right. I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't been around people that that's in that type of lifestyle. I never agree with it because I'm like, you know, I mean, but that's that's your that's your lifestyle. But but. You mean some y'all ain't got no problem with that either? It's right. both ways, you know. Right. It, it definitely it goes. The shit is it definitely goes both ways. But and I think the answer I don't know, like, to to speech that you don't like is is more speech, not less speech. So mm-hmm. I think you're a perfect example of that, where you you are the counterbalance. You know, you show what a female can do out here without showing all her goodies and dropping it low and things like Man. that. And then you also because I got are, some songs where I talk my shit. Like that's what I'm saying. I talk shit here every now and then. You say some but it's stuff, a way but it's to go real. about it. It's real. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's not focused on this whole song. Ain't gonna be about how we gonna be in the bed and do all this other. Sometimes you would just yeah. drop it. like one 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 song you said. Um, and I'm forgetting the actual. It might have been win lose the draw where you said something messed your mind up so much you you couldn't fuck for a month. You know? No, that's a, but that's a but that's a fact. That's a reality because everybody done been there before. So right, right, right. <laughs> that's a reality. Yeah. Um. And back to my, my fun question. First of all, this ain't even a question. I put this on a piece of paper, and I'm gonna put this in the air because I like. I think when you put stuff in the air, positive things happen. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what I see. Shay Noir. Featuring Mary J. Blige. Oh, <laughs> listen, Mary is another one too. She like on my top, like artist of all time. She's number one because I grew up on Mary. Mm-hmm. Listen, that was like, like a real auntie in a house type. Like if I ever meet this woman, I'm gonna tell her like, thank you for raising me because you really you don't even know you played a part in raising me. Um. Man, that'd be beautiful. And her whole life what? is like my mom. My mom would cry. Like my mom would really like she'd break down. 
<laughs> if I was ever doing something amazing, my- listen. Man. Let, let let Mary J appear in front of my face right now. I'll fuck around and break down and start crying. Man, I mean, that's probably one of them only celebrities, her and Nas, like and maybe like a few others. Like I'll probably be like a little starstruck. Or I'll be like, cause I, I don't feel like I will be with a lot of people, but like her and Nas and maybe like one more other person, I'll be like starstruck. Like damn. And I think if really we can't you? get Mary J. Blige, because I, I think the Mary J. Blige thing has to happen. It it only makes sense. Mm-hmm. But if we can't yeah. if we can't get that. And I'm thinking Shay Nora featuring Shaka Khan. That's just I that'd f- be hard. She used to be before my grandmother got saved. Like that was like my grandma. She's like the huge, the biggest Shaka Khan fan. Like that'd be hard. That'd be fire. That'd be different. Yeah, you, you, yeah, no, the Shaka Khan joint would be yeah, hard. Before, you said before grandmama got saved, it was all about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then after she got saved, it was no more um, sweet no. thing and <laughs> nah. All right, let me do she it. She ain't doing nothing. <laughs> let me, and I love me some shout to Shaka Khan. Shaka, if she ever sees this, please. I'm trying to interview Shaka Khan too. Legendary, love that lady. Um, is it true that mm-hmm. throwing snowballs is illegal in Buffalo? Not that I heard of. I was on Wikipedia, and they said that's one. That's one of the weird things about Buffalo that it's illegal to throw snowballs. I didn't even know that. All right. Well, I, I don't want you to get caught up. I don't want nobody to put the cuffs on you. you know what I mean. You get into a snowball fight. I didn't even know that. Um, oh shit! All right, Die and Breed with Special. That's a classic, of course. Um, yeah. What's it like being on a track with another MC who refuses to be outdone on a track? Um, so to me, y'all was like Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali, both in their prime on that track. Mm-hmm. Y'all both is bar spitters. Y'all both go on people's songs and steal the fucking songs. How does that mm-hmm. work when you got the the uh, what they call incredible force versus the movable object, whatever that is? What is that like? Um, it's just I don't know. It's just really feeding off the energy of each other. Um, that's what he like, said. Like you know, like we both. Yeah, that, I mean that's really all it is because it ain't like it's a competition. Like I'm trying to have a better verse. I never go in it. I never go in with the intentions of trying to have a better verse. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to give my best. Be, like. I always say I treat everything like Jay Z listening or some shit. Like that's all I'm I'm going in. I'm not really focused on and losing sleep trying to have the best verse on the song. Like that shit don't really like. I'm just happy to be in a conversation. Now if I come out with a better verse, so be it. But I don't really go in with those with that mindset. Um, I just feed off the energy of either the beat, usually the beat, and then whoever else I'm in the studio with. But like when this is me and special. Like, I just feed off his energy. Like, you know, I started, I kind of started that song off, and then he just came after, and we just was going off each other's lines. So whatever he said last, I got, okay, I'm going to come and, you know, come with my shit. So what so did you say? Really you said, I don't bury hatchets unless I bury the body with it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you see how he was rhyming before that. Like, uh, yeah, just feeding off, just feeding off the energy of each other. That's all it is. And, um... <laughs> I got some other questions over here. I know you only got a few minutes, so I want to kind of run through them. Oh, quick word association. I'm going to give you, I'm going to say some words, some names, and I just want you to give me your first, if you want to give me one or two words about it, that's cool. We're going to go rapid fire. Okay. Um, first thing coming to your mind. Okay. 38 special. Uh, Punchline King. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, hot Girl. <laughs> Lauren Hill. Oh, uh vibrant. Um vibrant, uh intelligent, mm. soulful. Got you. Prince. Mm. Electrifying. Mm. Uh uh genius. Mm. Uh Nicki Minaj. Um, dope, fire, uh, uh, you know, um, successful, uh, bars, uh, Lupe Fiasco, deep, soulful, um, I would say soulful type, type dude, Lil Yachty. Um, if you want to skip that one, you can. It's up to you. 
Yeah, because I don't listen to Yachty. Like, that's okay. why I came to think of that. <laughs> okay, this is me. Word of Touch is little Yachty garbage. That's me. That's not her. That's just me. <laughs> she ain't co signing none of this. Gotcha. I'm saying it. You was in an Oprah dress wig makeup for three, four days on the set of a video. Um, last one, Donald Trump. Foolish. <laughs> Foolish. Uh, confused. Uh, leaves me perplexed. Like, just, I don't know. I don't know what be going through that man's head just half the time when I hear him speak at these podiums. Yeah. I don't think much of anything actually <laughs> is going through his head. Um, are you a fan of any of the black intellectuals that's out there right now? And if so, who, who do you kind of keep up with? Oh, you got to break that down because I don't – like, is anybody like, specific? Like Cor like Cornell West or um, Tanahashi Coates or people like that that's out there kind of speaking out on these issues? Uh, um, I mean, I, I haven't been – I wouldn't say I've been – I've heard of them. I haven't followed any of their, right. their things and what they're doing. Um, there was a young – there was one lady. I forgot her name. I shared her, her video on my, my page. Or she spoke in, um, where was this at? This was, um, I forgot the spot that uh, George Floyd was killed at. But she had went out there and she was speaking. Um, if you go on my Instagram, I had reposted her video. Um, I thought she was dope. I said I was going to start following and watching some of her interviews. Okay. Um, um, I mean, of course, like I was, I was into Umar before he started really wilding out. <laughs> you said Umar was what started wilding, huh? Yeah, because I actually got put on to him from, uh, well, it wasn't from that. He had a, he, well, yeah, it was because it was a, from his Breakfast Club interview like years ago. And then, you know, he was also in, in uh, um, the Hidden Colors series. Yeah. You know, I was watching all of that. I was into that. But he, I don't know, he just, he having a moment right now. I mean, <laughs> it, was a, it was a woman. Um, I, I got to get her name because I, I really forgot her name. Um, but I said I was going to start following and watching some of her interviews. Because I love the speech that she gave at that protest. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's going to be one of them speeches that's going to really live on. You know, years from now, they're going to post in that. I heard the one girl, um, she gave that impassioned interview on the street where she talked about why stuff get burned up and everything. So I don't know if that's the same one you talk about. but Yeah, that was it. That okay. was it. That was her. She was very impassioned, yeah. very intelligent. I think she's a poet, yeah. too. I think she is. That, that's dope. I, I said I was gonna start following her, following her, and, and getting into her stuff, like seeing if she got any old interviews online or something. Oh wait a minute! You wear a lot of t-shirts in your videos, okay? Um, yeah. What's your favorite t-shirt? Like the style of it, or I mean, you got it? You had you one had a was was Prince. Uh, oh like, yeah. It's always like a message. Somebody that you really like is on your t-shirt in all your videos. Um, I'm into like graphic, like vintage, vintage, nostalgic type tees. Like right. those are really my favorites. Um, I, I usually like them oversized because in the summer I wear them with like biker shorts or something. Right. Uh, I'm really into like graphic, like 90 style tees. Like those are like really my favorite ones. Hey, where did you shoot that uh, that off the top freestyle when you was wearing that Gucci sweater? Where was that shot at? Like a little clothes store? Where was that? Um. Yeah, it was at a clothing store out in, uh, it was, yeah, this was out in New York. I can't remember what, what part I was at, but it was like a clothing store out there. You wrote your first 16 ever off of a trap called Quest Beat? Yeah, it was the, um, what was it, the Bonita Apple Bomb beat. Oh. This was years ago. I was like maybe joint? 15 or 16. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like maybe 15 or 16, like, <laughs> and just wrote, like, I can't remember what that joint, like, what, it, what did I say, but. I remember doing it off of one of those beats. For all you young kids out there, go listen to Benita Applebum remix by Tribe Called Quest, and everybody and their mama is on that remix, by the way. Uh, Jungle Brothers, I think Queen Latifah Moni Love is on there, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, De La Soul is on there, I believe. Um, I saw you recently on Flea Lord's IG comments. Shout to Flea. You said that you was going to get him a verse. Now, I'm being nosy right here. What's the, what's the word on the collab with Flea that's coming up? Um, I don't know if he want me to give it away. I don't want to spoil it. Well, don't spoil it, but what's <laughs> but, taking you so long to get Flea Lord that verse, Shay? 
Well, I had some stuff going on at my apartment. That's where I record at. Because you, you know Flea Lord drop an album every 14 hours. He do. I, you know, I couldn't get in there um, to get to record and stuff. Because I had a lot of people I owe features to, but I couldn't get in there. Um, I had, like, some stuff going on in my apartment. So um, I just, like, got that joint cleaned out and, you know, got everything all good, moved around and stuff. So I'm good. I'm back, you know, recording more now. So. But I told him I'm hit him, hit him with the verse. I don't know if he want me to reveal what oh, it is. You ain't got to reveal that. We want to, we want, <laughs> we want to let Flea be in control of that. Uh, I think I heard you say you did forty features. Was that last year or this year? Um, those, if you count uh, end of last year and now, uh, I mean, if you count the features I did during this quarantine, it's it's definitely more than that. But it was about forty. Like I didn't send out to people. What was the last fast food you ate? I love. I like Wendy's. I don't love Wendy's, but I like it. <laughs> Baconator. Nah, I don't eat pork. I I, I like the, the the little spicy chicken joints. You did say that on like eight different songs that you don't mess with the pork. So, um, nah, I ain't pork in like over ten years. Yeah. Um. Do you have a favorite verse of all time? Um, by myself. Yeah. Or with a, a, a feature. Just something that you spit. Do you have a favorite? Because you got a lot of uh, eaters. Um, I think my favorite verse that I did so far might have been my sections joint. Oh, sections. I like that verse. I think that's, that's the, like one of my favorite word verses. Shout out to Class Murder. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah fast. Shout out to Class. What he just he just did like I think two hundred k. And one day off his video with Casanova, shout out to the class. Oh, yeah, yeah, real talk. But, um, yeah, I think my my section's video, my section's first, and the royalty, I think. Because you are a true tactician, <laughs> uh, you can spit, it seems like, over anything. Do you see yourself maybe rapping over some purely R&B tracks? Um, I know Spesh got a soul, you know, he got soulful stuff coming out, uh, or he produces very soulful stuff, but... I'm thinking about like Nas and AZ, Life's a Bitch, or maybe like Lounge and Remix. Um, you see yourself getting on more purely R&B tracks, pr trying that out? Yeah, I've done a few for some artists, like just singers in the town. I've did a few. Um, I can definitely see myself doing that because I listen to more R&B music than I do rap. So I can see myself doing that for sure. Um, and I heard you, I, I've heard you spit fast. I heard you spit slow. Um, I think Queen City... I think on that song, you spit faster. And by the way, these yeah. are all classic joints I'm talking about. When I name a song, write them down, make a note, and go check these out. The song is called Queen City. Um, you spit kind of mid-tempo. Do you feel comfortable at a particular uh, BPM? Because I think a lot of uh, hits off of Snoop's first album, uh, Doggy Style, I think they would, all his hits was like 94 BPM, and I felt like that's because he was comfortable in that zone. Did you have a particular BPM range that you feel more comfortable in? Yeah, I mean, it's usually like between 83, 87. Like, I don't think I've, uh, the Queen City joint was like, I think 90 something. I can't remember what was the BPM for that, but usually like 83 to 87 is comfortable. Um, because I feel like when you, when you that at that pace you can because you got some songs when you go too far you got a pace that's too fast um i don't like it too much because it's only one way you can rap and that's fast mm -hmm. then you got some joints that's a little slower or mid tempo like more 83 to 88 something like that um you could be fast or slow with it you know just depending on how you able to you know wiggle it in but you could be fast or slow and over those type of tempos so that's like what i'm more comfortable with Got you. Um, were you ever a battle rapper coming up? Nah, they used to try to get me into it because they had like a little thing going on out here in the falls. It was getting battle rappers to come out here and judge battles. They were trying to get me into it, but somebody told me not to do it, so I, I just never did it. Got you. And do you feel bad at all when you get on somebody's song and you steal the whole show? <laughs> nah, because <laughs> if you ask me to get on the song, you got to understand I'm going to come with my best, so <laughs> you got to come with yours, too. My God, because that's all you do is steal people's songs. You and Spesh. Um, I got a couple more questions here. Uh, 
What does this moment mean to you right now? Looking back at, at all the spinners that you went bar for bar with on all these cuts, and now this light is shining so bright on you, this new album with Apollo Brown, what does this moment in time feel like? It just feel like my hard work is finally paying off. Um, you know, like I said, you, I, I said and mentioned in the interview, um, the losses that I've taken, and those are just, you know, brief. I mean, those are just like, you know, kind of like not small losses, but that's just a little bit. They ain't even like really deep into like other losses that I've taken. But, um, you know, I just feel like my my hard work is really starting to pay off and it's a beautiful thing for me. So um, this moment means a lot to me. And I just see myself, you know, with the Lord's willing, just elevating even more like a year from now. It's going to be a different story. I'm going to be able to get that big collab that I've been waiting like a good year on so you know it's just gonna keep it's just elevation um and not just in my music but just more like for me mentally and spiritually and even physically like just becoming more aware of 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 the right things for me to do and how i should move and and, and uh you know kind of move through life do you have a a five year or a ten year vision for for yourself have you thought that far out ahead I've thought five year, um, you know, it's things that I want to get into and venture into outside of music. Um, you know, I studied, I went to college, I went to Buff State, um, and I studied media production when I was there. And I, I directed like a film for a, a class project. And I kind of like, got like a little passion for it, I, I seen from it. I, I was a little interested in it. So I would like to dig back into that and start directing like little local films in the town they always doing like some like little like hood films out here um out in buffalo like yeah, some people that be reaching out to me to get into the films i said i would love to do something like that like have our own little like kind of like in a way like a upstate bronx tale yeah type 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 joint and, and i want to i want to direct that because i have a vision and certain things that i'll be seeing like i watch a lot of movies so it'd be certain things i'll be saying i'm like damn i could do that in my own in my own hometown so I think that should be dope. Um, of course, like investing in real estate, uh, get into real estate, getting my own storefront um, for for clothing lines that I'm, you know, trying to put out. Um, you know, I want to do a skincare line. I've been talking to some people that I've been meeting through Twitter, uh, some for like getting skin consultations and and just talking to different people. But I probably have to wait a couple of years for that just because it's expensive to try to test these products out. But I, I, I you know, I'm doing most of the work as far as just starting and getting some advice and talking to some people. But yeah, like this is, it's a lot of stuff that I got on my list, but I have to take it step by step. Do you think the music industry is ran by inherently evil people? Yeah, I believe that, but you got to know if you are aware of this, you got to know how to maneuver and, and move through it. You can't blame somebody, especially if you're aware of it already. You can't blame you can't blame nobody if you become a victim of something that you're already aware of. Like, you know, so if if I'm aware that this that is 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 evil people and people trying to get over on me and these record labels, why would I just go sign a deal without a lawyer, knowing this? Right. So um, these are things that I I'm keeping myself and I'm shielding myself from. That's why I say it's better to just be independent. Um, but these are things that I'm shielding myself for, from because I already know and I'm aware of what's going on. So um, I'm definitely going to be able to. What's the one line different. on the song where you talk about not crying over spilled milk? I don't cry over. Why, when, when, when the mix, milk spills, why blame the cow? I don't cry over the spilled milk because something like I, I got the paper towels. I can't remember. It's a brilliant. It's a brilliant. I can't remember like, how I went in about it. And I forget, yeah. I mean, if you heard the beat, you would jump right into it. I just, I'm not hearing the beat right now. But I mean, I know you got a lot of things to do. You got um, not only a, a big week ahead of you, not only just a big uh, a year ahead of you, you got a huge career in front of you. And I'm so happy that I was able to get to talk to you at this time. It was, a, it was an honor for me. It's a blessing. Uh, I want to thank you for taking your time. To, to honor us with your presence. And I want to also specifically thank you on behalf of all my subscribers. Thank you for making the music that you make. It has been entirely enriching to all of us. You make the game better. 
Uh, I don't know what we would do without you at this point. So continue to do what you do and know that we got your back and we, we pull it for you and we rooting for you. Shay Noir, thank you so much for joining us on the Mike Power Show. I, I appreciate you having me. Thank you. <clears throat> Absolutely, Queen. And then you stay safe uh, and have a good time. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Hey, that's my little sister. I told her to be coming. <laughs> hey, how you doing? You just got famous. You know what I mean? <laughs> Future bar spitters. You know what I mean? <laughs> right there. That's what's up. Thanks. All right.